Oh, here we go. And it's starting. Slowly, but surely, it is definitely starting. So anyway, yay, it's going. All right, so new setup, new everything. If you see me doing this, it's because I'm looking around cameras to see um, <laughs> to see my monitor. My monitor is directly behind the cameras, and there's all kinds of um, accoutrements, we'll say, holding up everything that is sitting out here. Oh my gosh, you, I'm, I'm going to have to take a picture and post it. It's sort of crazy what I have set up right now. It's been a work in progress, but hi, it is week six. It's demo day, and um, we're going to do a bit of sawing today. Last minute edition, we are going to do the essential pendant, and we'll show people on Twitch. So it's pretty last minute, but um, here we are. It, if you're noticing something new, this is the new setup. It was over there, and it was completely crazy. And um, but I, I, you know, it's we've been here six weeks, and I made a decision earlier this week. I think I, I think I shared that. You know, at least emotionally, mentally, I have decided that you know this is sort of a permanent thing. I can't keep going with the. Um, quasi oh this is temporary thing I you know so and I was getting really uncomfortable sitting at that table when I had this beautiful other setup behind me that was not getting used that was a little bit more efficient than what I was doing before so yesterday I took the time out and I moved everything over put up some shelving and some brackets and um, and voila and why do I have all these banners behind me because originally if you recall from the um, the studio tour, all of that behind me were sliding glass doors. And because there's no drapes up there, we have all this lighting coming in and we needed to block out the lighting. And voila, wouldn't you believe it? I happen to have all these banners and um, <laughs> it, it's a great light shield and it's, it's working out pretty well. I'm, I'm so excited that we already had it. And, I was actually trying to get rid of them last month with my getting rid of 40 things in 40 days and um, had not yet disposed of these and I'm pretty happy right now <laughs> that we still have it. Woohoo! Anyway, so that's the new setup. Um, little patience today as I go through the new camera setup and trying to figure out how it's all going to work. So um, anyway. The rest of this week, uh, just to see, Friday we have the Perigee Part 2. If you missed Part 1, it is recorded, and if you'd like to still participate, you can. You can register for that for the Zoom only uh, on our website, theurbanbeater.com. I believe I put a link there for you, and uh, you can see that. And next week, we have our new Zoom project, which is the Outsider. Um, is this pendant? It's sort of a prong setting of sorts. It's a little bit different from what um, I've ever done before, and it's a step up. It's a step up. So it's a, it's really pretty. That's still available. Shipping out uh, tomorrow for everybody who's ordered kits, and if you haven't received it already, and there's still uh, kits available and spaces available in that. You can again register on theurbanbeater.com. Okay, so um, today sawing. Sawing can be one of the the bane of your existence when it comes to jewelry making or you can totally love it like I do. I love, 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 love sawing. I think it's very meditative. I think that um, you can do so much with it. Heck, I'd rather saw than file any day. If there's just a little bit to take off and I can do it with a saw, I would definitely do it with a saw because it just for me, it's just so much easier. And, you know, I, I have found the difference between people. Uh, what's the difference? Why does somebody love sawing? Why does somebody hate sawing? And I really think it's in the explanation and, and the, the know-how. If you were not taught how to saw or given tips on how to saw, you'd probably hate it. 
like me when I first started. I mean, the story is, you know, I was taking this class up in New York City and everybody there pretty much knew what they were doing. Us rank beginners were just sort of thrown to the wolves. Anyway, so the instructor handed me a saw, handed me a piece of metal and said, here, saw it. Okay, no instruction. And the only thing I've ever sawed before was wood. So, so I start going at it, right? So I totally start going at the uh, sawing and some instructor comes up and says, what are you doing? And she's like practically yelling at me, which doesn't ever go over well. And I'm like, um, I'm sawing? What do you think I'm doing? So she goes, well, that's not how you saw. And I'm thinking, well, had somebody said something to me, perhaps I would not be doing it wrong. So that said, here it is. Here's some information, and some of it is a little bit argumentative. I know that. And, you know, some of it is, um, is personal. And you have to, I, I believe that you have to figure that out as you go through all the processes that we do. You know, you, you want to learn the basics and you want to understand how to do it, but at some point it sort of changes for you. And you got to do what's comfortable for you. And if it's working, who's to argue, right? It, it's just, it's just what it is. And typically we just try not to break the laws of physics is what um, what I try to do. Anyway, so one of the first things that you're, you, that is sort of argumentative is whether or not you need some sort of a wax or a lubricant, okay? I like it. I think it makes life a lot easier. There are some people out there who say that you don't need it. Well, I don't know. Again, that's sort of argumentative but I think a little bit of cut loop goes a long way. So you'll want some cut loop, okay? The next thing is um, when you hold your saw, okay, you, you, you don't wanna give it a death grip because, and you don't wanna white knuckle it because you're gonna be forcing it, okay? It's just really bad to be forcing your saw. You wanna hold it with love and be kind to it and it will be kind to you. So that's, a, that's the second thing. The next thing is how you sit, and I'll, I'll change positions here, but I want to I want to talk about it for a second. You don't want to choke up on your saw. You know, usually when people have a have a bench pin, a lot of people choke up on it. If you choke up on it, you, you really don't get um, a nice feel for it, and then you start forcing it. Okay, so you want it to be away from you, and and you want to um, be comfortable with it. You know, which brings me to your body position. A lot of people do this when they saw. Like, what's with the shoulders? Relax. You know, this is great. I call it sawing meditation. You want to just relax those shoulders and you want to relax your hands, relax your body. This is supposed to be fun. There's no crying in sawing, okay? There's no reason for it, all right? So just relax. And one of the things that sort of came up in a class, which I thought was a really pretty cool thing, is somebody started humming when they were sawing because it helps her relax. And who's to judge? If you need to whistle, whistle, if you need to sing, hum, whatever you need to do to just relax is what you do. So hum, why not? So that's that's what, I, you know, body position is important. The last thing is you wanna make sure that when you're sitting down, you wanna plant your feet, both feet, spread them. Don't cross your feet because it, it doesn't put you in the right position. And don't sit like this when you're sawing. You know, this is not side saddling, okay? You wanna spread those legs and you wanna put the saw and the bench pin between you. And that's the, the a great position to be in. And you wanna be sort of looking over your work when you're doing this, okay? So um, I'm gonna go ahead and change the camera's position so that I can show you all the tools that you're going to need today. And, um, and then I'm actually gonna change the position twice more um, for what we're doing. All right, so two cameras to work with. And let's see if I can get this to work well. Okay, that's camera number one. Let's go to camera number two. there. Oops. A little too far up. Okay. Sorry, honey.
So just to let you know, I'm streaming today on both Twitch and Facebook. Okay, so uh, whichever whichever one is running fastest for you is probably the one that I would pick because I know that Facebook does run a little bit slow, and um, so you can get might be able to get a clearer view on um, Twitch. Okay, so you're going. Uh, and if you are posting comments, we are responding on Twitch, and can and if you post comments on Facebook, I will respond after we are done. All right. Unfortunately, the system doesn't allow us to respond immediately there or comment. All right. So, uh, one of the things you're going to need when you saw is you will need a um, a bench pin. Any any bench pin will do. You know, I know that there's a lot of fancy bench pins out there these days. And um, so, you know, those are always nice to have too because they have all these different cut, cutouts and things like that. Uh, you'll need a center punch so that we can, oops, pierce a hole. Um, I'll adjust the Twitch camera in a second here after I finish the tools. Okay, so uh, the center punch is so that you can center punch your your metal to create a hole, or you can use some sort of hole punch. Any any kind will work. Okay, if you have um, if you're doing some really really small uh, tight piercings like this, then you might need to drill the holes instead of using a punch because these punches don't go down to as small as some of these spaces, like the tiny little detail. Okay. So, um, so a hole punch, a tube cutting plier. So if you want to cut tubes, a tube cutting plier is your friend, okay? And of course you need a saw and saw blades. For today's project we also will need a dapping block and some sandpaper is also helpful and of course a solder setup because we're going to solder these two pieces. Um, so what this is, is I call this the essential pendant because um, it's for essential oil. So we're going to put a piece of leather back here and that's why it's cut open like that so that you can drop essential oil in there and, and wear it. Okay, So that's what that is. Alright, so now to sawing. Oops. Again, bear with me playing with two cameras today. I think that should do it. Let's see if we can get over. There we go. Okay. Okay. So, um, I'm going to very quickly demo the two cutting plier. That'll be a little bit. Okay, maybe not. I'm getting confused between all my cameras. So, oops, you don't want to see that. So, the tube cutting plier has a slit in it, so you can see here. Okay, and what you want to do is you want to mark your tube. Um, to the length that you want it to be and then you take that marking so we're just gonna mark it arbitrary because you know it's just a demo and you're gonna take that marking and you're going to put it right in between the slit alright and then you want to hold it up against the table and take out your saw and I'm going to hit the camera. Okay. And just take the saw and the saw blade and run it right down the center where your slit is. So what's nice about the tube cutting plier is that it's holding the tube between you know, wedging, wedging both sides so that you don't have one side that's just failing, flailing out there. And it just makes life a lot easier. And see, I didn't lubricate and I can feel that. 
so I'm just gonna run it on my um, on my cut lube a little bit there and you see it's making a nice sound anytime your saw starts making a <coughs> sound back off you're going too hard and that's it voila a cut tube that's what a tube cutting plier is if you don't have a tube cutting plier what you'll have to do is you will oops you'll be holding it off the side of your bench pin and you're going to just saw it um, that's no fun but it, it does work another thing you can do too you can carefully um, put it on a vise and um, you can carefully put it on a vise and have it holding it for you so that you're not holding it like this and the last trick is you can go ahead and file a divot in your um, bench pin so that you have a groove for your your round tube so that it doesn't go moving around all right so that's pretty simple so if you need any of these items the link is available on our Facebook page I'm sorry on, on the description of the Facebook uh, live okay and so you can um, you can order make it easier to order all right so here um, first thing you're going to do to make this pendant is you want to make you want to transfer or draw a design onto your your piece I think you can see that right so here I've just tr transferred a dandelion on it on my metal um, you can draw it or if you want to take out a piece of paper I, the design you can cut it and you can glue it down um, rubber cement is probably best for it okay and then you'll need to pierce a hole because we want the design to be in the middle I don't want to come out I come from the outside and saw all the way in okay so so just to let you know the instructions are not listed on the website yet um, because I only made this decision about an hour ago to do this project I was just thinking oh you know um, we're doing sawing and there's a great project let's do that so that's what that was about so anyways to make the hole in the middle again you can use a punch or a, a hole punch something like this or you can go ahead and drill a hole because I want a smaller hole than the punch I'm gonna go ahead and center punch it on my bench block okay so first time using this workbench for the live I'm already loving it and then I have a tiny little drill bit that um, what am I thinking It's a high-speed drill bit for metal okay so now uh, it's on a flex shaft and we're just gonna put it right in the hole right in the divot and okay I must have a dull one that one's going in the trash here in a second Ooh, I have a way dull drill bit huh now so I will have to grab another drill bit here it does not want to drill what do I do with my old drill bits I put it in a container and save all my metal for the um, for the scrap yard it's another way of recycling because you know this is steel you're not gonna be able to put it in your recycle bin right so if you want to recycle it you take it down to the scrapyard they'll take any metal that you can't recycle all right so that's a new drill bit look at that okay so just drilling a hole in the middle of the uh, design all right so now because I'm I'm starting from the middle how do you get it into your saw blade well you're going to have to open it up and put it in one end make sure that the um, design is facing up so you can see it and I'm putting it to the opposite end like so and then I'm going to clamp clamp it down and then on my bench with the end on the bench or something stable here 
I'm going to release, and while I release it, I'm pulling down. I'm pulling down on my handle, okay? And then I'll tighten it. And you can see it's... Okay. Adjusting. There we go. Okay. So. So another thing, too, is you don't want the, your saw blade to be too tight or too loose. If it's too tight or too loose, what's going to happen is it's going to break. I'm using a 2 aught saw blade. Um, it's something standard I, I keep around. It seems to work for just about everything I need. Um, anyway, so if you are doing more fine work, you want to go ahead and switch to a smaller blade. Okay. So from the middle, I'm going to work out on my designs. Oops. Little bit of cut lube there and notice I'm working in the hole okay and it's not a big deal if you start sawing into your wood that's what it's there for but we're not here to saw wood okay so if you do hit the wood back off and so if you also notice here my position it's a little hard to tell but it's almost at my chest the um, the bench pin and that's where I like it it's, it's a good place to be Okay, then I can see it a little bit better. It's closer to the eye. So when you're sawing, you want to make sure that your eye is looking in front of the saw blade, not behind it. And notice I'm also sawing in long strokes. I'm not doing this. It's going to take you two years to do this. So nice, long, even strokes. And if you're listening, you see it's a nice sound. It's not doing, see? Now I'm forcing it. You can hear the difference, right? So if you just allow the saw blade to do its job, it should sound really nice. So here I'm on a corner. How do you turn a corner? So you run your saw in one place and start turning it, okay? Just like this. I'm not really cutting except cutting in place to make the turn, okay? And then I'll do it again to turn it around and come back the other way. I'm just going to make the stem a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm just going to make the stem a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker, and not just run it back. So I'm actually sawing. See, it's just really easy and nice. If you have any questions, throw it out because this is going to take a minute. Okay, so then I'm going to get to the middle and I'm going to turn it to each one of my little, I don't know, what do you call those things on a, on a dandelion? Prawns? Uh, flakes? Stems? Stems. Maybe a stem? And then at the end, it sort of has a little fork on each one of these ends. So I'm going to go one direction, back it out, and go the other direction and make a V. And then I'm just going to back, keep backing up because I just want to get to the middle and do another one. So I'm just going to keep doing it this way until I get all of them done. You see how quickly this is happening? So remember, when you're sawing, you want to make sure you're using nice, long strokes, okay? Let's see. I'm sorry, Andy, I can't hear you. Okay. So, you know, what's funny is when people buy blades, it sort of makes me laugh. Um, I, I've handed students plenty of blades to purchase, and they all look at me like, you're selling me one blade? I said, no, because they're so small, they can't tell that the package is actually 12 blades. So it's just really funny to me. Um, but So when you're purchasing blades from us, it's a package of 12, just as an FYI there. Okay. And again, I'm just backing it out every time instead of trying to force it out. 
So my goal always is, can I get through a project without breaking a blade? That's one. And can I use a blade so long that it is actually worn? I know, it's a little game I play in my head. If you have a hard time, notice how I'm holding the piece with my hands, okay? If you have a hard time with that, take out a C-clamp and clamp it to your bench pin. You know, maybe you have arthritis in your hands or something, and that's always helpful. I'm sorry, the question is, can I explain the difference between a... Okay, so the question is, can I explain the difference, and correct me if I'm wrong here, the difference between sawing perpendicular versus at an angle? Um, you know what? I was always taught to saw perpendicular. So my, my saw is going straight up and down. Okay. Oh, you know, I, if it looks like I'm at an angle, it's probably the camera shot. Okay. But I am sawing straight up and down. Um, so, so I think that's, yeah. I, I, I really think it's a camera angle but I am up and down, okay? So halfway there. You know, sometimes you do, though, have to start at an angle, but I always work my hands right back to uh, being perpendicular. Oh, okay, I need more loop. So it was starting to stick on me. So um, I decided that I needed just a little bit more lube. Okay. So remember when you're sawing, or your saw blade should be facing out, not towards the throat, all right? And if you're holding it up, the teeth should be going down like a Christmas tree, okay? And just a couple more here, and I'll be done. Yes, I've decided to do the smallest, most intricate of designs. Why not? Okay, one more. Here we go. Gently. See, every time it fights me, Notice I'm not forcing it. I just sort of back off and I reapproach. What I see, one of the most common mistakes is people forcing it. And every time someone forces it, that's when it sort of just falls apart and they break a saw blade. Like I'm about to do taking this thing out. Okay, so to take it out, I just loosened up one of the knobs here, one of the screws, and pulled it out. There you have it. Um, so someone was asking on Twitch, what is the crown icon? Crown icon next to your name means you have subscribed to um, my Twitch channel. So what does that really mean to you? Honestly, I don't know what it means to you. I know what it means to me. That means I get to say thank you so much for being supportive and you, I just got paid $2.50 for your subscription. Um, if you are an Amazon Prime user, um, it's free so I really appreciate it when uh, somebody subscribes because I get to make a little bit of money uh, as far as the first I don't know what that means yet maybe your first to subscribe I don't know that's, that's a new one 
Okay, so here to make the dome shape, I'm going to use my um, dapping block. All right, and actually, I think I'm going to move this guy up just a little bit so you can see what's going on. And here we are. And notice I'm just moving my dap around to get that to dome. So you can see. Ooh, it got big. Whoops. Okay, so my, my little tiny cut got really big, but I'm going with it. Okay, because when we dapped it, it opened up. It's been a while since I've done this project. Like, I think it's been five years since I've done this project. Wasn't thinking. All right, so for the back side, you can see there's an opening on the back side. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to put, I, so I cut a like half moon out of the back, as you can see there, and uh, we're going to dap this. So the question is, uh, why am I using a wood dap versus a metal dap? Because the wood dap is a little more shallow, and none of the, um, None of the metal daps, even in a set, is as shallow as a wood dap. And I just wanted this to have a little bit of a cup. I, I didn't want it to go too round. So, and and also, you know what? A wood dap, if you don't have a dap at all, it's only $8, so it's a nice way to get started. You know, it's, it's, it's a small investment. So here you can see um, I've made a... Uh, the back for it. Okay, that's it. I'm a little disappointed about how big this opened up, but again, we're just demoing, right? Okay, so next up, you want to sand the back because what has happened is the edge of the disc because you've dapped it. See this edge here, okay, has cupped up. And because it's cupped, we want to make sure I mean, it's not going to solder right. So we want to make sure that we take that edge off by sanding, and that creates a nice surface for um, it creates a nice surface for uh, for soldering. Okay, so okay, my grippy gloves aren't grippy anymore. Let's try. I know, I have the wrong glove on, but I'm going with it because I don't know where the other one is, a good one is. You, you, you wouldn't think that we have inventory here, right, that I could just go get a new pair of gloves, but all right. So you want to do both sides. I'm working on 400 uh, grit sandpaper. And I'm looking for the surface to be nice and flat, okay, to each other. So you just do that until you have a nice surface to solder on. All right, that's good. We're going to move the cameras again. And let's see for soldering. So these are fire bricks, if you're wondering what that is. They use it to line the inside of a, um, uh, the inside of a, a fireplace, okay? You can get them for pretty inexpensive if you're trying to create a work surface. Um, I've had these for a while, and when we created this studio, it's like, ah, oh, you know, I might as well take it out and use it. I might just get rid of it here because it's just a workbench. All right. Here we are. And switch the camera a little bit. Okay. So then we'll take out some solder. Uh, using, if you're doing silver, you'll do hard solder. And here we're just going to use a little bit of um, copper solder paste. It's nice, it's easy, because I can just do this with it. So I'm just going to put it along the edge, like so.
all in a bunch of different places. You do not need to spread this like peanut butter. I saw a, um, a picture last night that someone had put solder on the entire rim and it's like oh my gosh it's so much solder. If you're going to do that you need to back off. You don't need all that much. And another thing too is FYI copper solder spreads like crazy okay because it's so soft so be careful of that don't go too um, bonkers with it so I think you can see um, how much solder I have there Let's see okay we'll show Facebook and then we'll show Twitch okay and again I didn't spread it around like peanut butter I just put some dabs there alright actually I'm not going to use the pumice I'm going to use the um, the mesh why because I want to be able to get under it okay this is going to be interesting hmm. Because the camera is right there, which means I might hit the camera. <laughs> All right, wish me luck. Um, if y'all start melting, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna heat. Oops. From above, I'm gonna heat the whole thing. Everybody happy hot. And then from underneath. Okay, can't point that way, camera's that way. Heat from underneath, and then over. Just like so, and watch the solder go all the way around. Ooh, making me happy. Yes. So it actually went all the way around the edge there. And pickle didn't turn on today. Um, gonna grab a pair of tweezers and quench that okay so there it is all right and show everybody out there and the back side okay maybe I'm not showing you I'm learning where is this camera there it is okay the back side and the front and then we'll throw it in the pickle. Okie dokie. So we'll go back in. Just threw it in the pickle. You're going to need a jump ring. At least a five millimeter or six millimeter jump ring is good. Here we are. And we're going to solder it to the top. Okay, so still learning my um, my electrical situation here. I did not turn on my pickle pot that I thought I did, but I think it has pickle. Good enough. Good enough for soldering. All right, so I'm going to solder a jump ring at the top of this. And for me, the easiest thing to do is to just put it right in here and hold it with my fire tweezers. Make sure that the opening is facing down. Remember, the reason why I'm using open jump rings instead of um, closed jump rings is because I don't know what kind of solder they're using when they use uh, when when they close those jump rings. So if they use like extra easy solder, you're more than likely going to blow it open. But if you are using closed jump rings, make sure that even uh, you identify where their, con their uh, joint is and face it down just in case, okay? So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold the jump ring right where I want it and solder it.
So again, I'm simulcasting on both Twitch and Facebook at the same time here. So I just got it really hot, and as soon as it got hot, I brought my my jump ring down with the solder on it, and bam, there it is. Woohoo! Okay, you can see it is a done deal. Okay, let's show everybody there, and show every oops, show everybody there. There we go. Okay, back into the pickle my cold pickle. Remember everybody always asks can, can you use pickle cold? Uh, absolutely you can use it cold. It's just going to take some time is the difference as to why you would use cold pickle versus a uh, hot pickle. It works a lot easier. So all we're going to do now is polish it and then we are done. So for everybody who's watching if you want to make this or have any um, inclination of making this I do have <laughs> I'll post the, the instruction sheets here soon enough, um, probably by this evening, okay? Um, and also, oops, and also um, I, uh, I wanted to make the offer out there. I have a lot of scrap uh, leather, so if you need some scrap leather to put in the back of your essential pendant, let me know and I'll throw some in um, to your next order, okay? It's not really a big deal. So that's that's that and let's see, we're gonna give another minute in the pickle here. Okay. So I just lost something. Oh <laughs> Again, this two camera thing is getting a little complicated. Okay, could be could be pickled a little bit longer. No biggie. But there we have it. And um there we have it. So here you can just steel wool it or um, pro polish it, whatever, and up to you if you want to patina this in any way with a little black max or a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, liver sulfur. Okay, I am just steel wooling it really quickly here. And you'll see. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so there's that. And then there's that. You can see I just polished it a little bit. Okay. And I was asked to give a close up of the. Um, I don't think I can hold that up. Let's see. So these are the two projects I had done before in silver. And then we'll show the Facebook people. So it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. It does take a little practice to get to the um, to those nice clean lines and not jagged. Remember, you want to use the entire length of the saw. You don't want to make little sawing um, motions because it's going to um, just make little jagged edges, okay? So that's it. Any other questions? Uh, Monday, we are doing heart to heart. Heart, and it's another minimal metal, and it is going to be this guy, okay? It's a two sided prong set piece, and then, um, so we'll show everybody out there in Facebook land. I am tonight going to post a, um, let's see if that focuses for you, there we go, okay. So um, anyway, I will have those stones available for sale, I'm going to post it this evening so that you can be prepared for Monday's Heart to Heart Minimal Metal Monday project. Last question just came in is, um, 
regarding cutting into the wedge of um, your your bench pin someone stated that they're having a little anxiety of that you know what it's what it's there for and it's not a big deal you saw right into it as soon as you feel or see sawdust coming up and um, just back off it's okay because again that's what it's for okay you you really want to use it to your advantage because you're, you're trying not to saw your table and I, I'm gonna tell another story before we go you'll laugh okay oh or oh, you'll cry so I was at, at a um, I was at a store and there was a lot of people that, that day actually were there there was like 16 um, people in this class and we were sawing and doing all of this and filing you know you want to use a bench pin for filing too and this person was just going at it and she was doing it on the table like it's a store she was doing it on their table and literally cutting away their table and I was like um uh, could, 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 could you not do that um uh, could you like you know use the bench pin because you know these things are eight dollars your table well my table it's going to be a couple hundred, if not more. And, you know, the woman just sort of looked at me and went, no, it's a work table. I'm like, yeah, but it's not mine. And it's not yours. So that's my story. You know, I had to actually ask her three times to please stop. It was just sort of crazy. So your bench pin, it's eight bucks. It's wood, and that's what it's meant for. And, you know, it's, I have to, the other part of this that's sort of funny too is, um, I keep seeing these videos of people who have these totally worn away bench pins and I'm like, one day mine will look like that. But I have so many bench pins, I don't think mine's ever going to look like that because I use whatever is sitting on top. And, um, you know, I don't know, it's just very, uh, it's a mystique to me, I guess you could say that it, it just, it's novel. It makes, it makes me feel like a real jeweler to have a worn away bench pin, but eh. I have five worn, slightly worn bench pins instead of one incredibly worn out bench pin. So wear it away. Make it a make it a badge of honor and, you know, use your bench pin. I hope that answers your question. I will see everybody who's registered for Perigee on um, Friday. Otherwise, I will see everybody else on Monday for the Heart to Heart Pendant. And again, I will post the stones tonight if anyone's interested in making a purchase for that kit. All right. Have a great rest of the week. It's hump day. Yeah. And the weather's churning. Woohoo. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on Twitch and on Facebook. Oh, I forgot. Remember, YouTube has all the videos posted, and um, Twitch only has the videos to posted for 14 days. However, I will be keeping all these videos up at the very least on my YouTube and Facebook um, QTalk page, okay? So no worries. You can always go back and review it. Okay. Now I'm really going to say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>